Well, welcome everyone to the, the planning board meeting of August 22nd, 2024. We're here in city chambers and also uh, via Zoom. Um, just a word about our Zoom. If do any participants come on Zoom, we do take comments from them at the uh, virtual podium. Um, but the hearing is officially in person and all our presenters are asked to come here in person. Um, you're able to send in comments to the staff prior to the meeting, um, but we don't accept at this point any uh, any chat comments either if you're out there in the Zoom world. Um, one other note is that, uh, you know, it's been about 10 years that the planning office hasn't provided planning board members with paper documents. Back, I, I'm, I was on the board prior to this in the 2000s, and every couple of weeks we'd get this huge packet from the planning office that had plans and all the documents we needed. But that doesn't happen anymore. Saves a lot of postage, saves a lot of staff time. So we, we all look at our uh, documents electronically. So that's why often we seem to be looking at our screens or our phones rather than engaging with the audience. And I hope the uh, audience and presenters can understand that. Um, so it was a good change. It was a hard for this OG to get used to, um, but uh, it's working. All right. Um, so traditionally, we ask if there's any uh, public comment before we open up the meeting to the public hearings to the agenda. Is there anyone here, Council Chambers, who'd like to make a public comment? On items not on the agenda. Okay. And there's still no one in uh, Zoom world. Okay. Very good. Then at well, let's open up a site plan to add 8,000 square feet to the existing warehouse by Green Mountain Electric Supply at 168-178 Industrial Drive, map ID 18D-063 and 24B-087. And it looks like we have a presentation coming up. Slide working. Is it green? You have to push the button. Green. Oh, do I show you? Hold it while it's off. Uh, no, just one minute. It turns green. Yeah. I don't know why. Okay. Hello, my name's Cole Modesto, Arlovec Associates. Uh, do you guys want me to set up a board or should I just, just do uh, strictly sharing it? Strictly sharing is probably okay. And what was your first name again? Cole Modesto. Okay. I'm here today representing uh, Mr. Matt Stoll for the project 168 and 78 uh, Industrial Drive. Let's try to set up. I just like to share. I'll share my screen before I get going. Plans. Okay, so the client today is uh, excuse me. The client is uh, here for uh, approval for a uh, uh, eight thousand square foot addition to a property at one sixty eight one seventy eight Industrial Drive. Uh, currently, the the property is developed. It, I'll just run quickly through the existing conditions. There are uh, you know there are two curb cuts that will throughout the project uh be maintained uh access and egress will be uh continued as is today the the location of the addition will be in this if you see my mouse will be in this rear area of the site um parking we are very over parked as is right now so there will be some removal of some parking in, right in this area as in order for truck movements because associated with this building there will be a loading dock so a truck will come in and load right here uh let me just go to the demo so you can actually see what i'm talking about so this is just our demolition sheet and showing what will be removed um, it's very minimal. It's mainly the, the bulk of the demolition here will be for uh, to reroute a water and gas line around the building. Currently, it would be going underneath the proposed building. So that is the bulk of the demolition work that is being proposed here. Uh, a fire hydrant is being relocated uh, just 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 around the building, just right slightly around it. 
just along with that water line associated to it. And here's our layout for it. Uh, the project does classify as a redevelopment for the stormwater standards. So in order to make sure we meet that criteria, they, the new impervious area that we are proposing with the building roof will be uh, subsided with the, this is, was the existing is impervious area over here. And we are going to propose we rip up that part of the parking lot and loam and seed it and provide grassed area in this side of the parking lot. I know you guys uh, previously saw a plan where we had uh, proposed over here be gravel, uh, which one? No, we revised it. We took it for your comments and consideration. We said, all right, over here is a better area. So that way we're not we're not doing some sort of weird gravel parking lot with grass in between area, which made sense. Um, as far as utilities, uh, grading wise, there's really not much to see as far as the, the loading dock will be the depressed loading dock. But as far as the utilities go, like I said, the main thing is to reroute a gas and water line around the building, uh, electric and sanitary will be brought through the existing building. Uh, the use of the building will maintain as is, I know there's multi-tenant, but, uh, the current owner, uh, green mountain electric will, will be the company using this building for uh, existing use. Um, I guess that's kind of yeah, I'd like to open up for any questions. I'm uh, sorry, what was that? Spot that you're, you're storing that, that, that area on the right? Yes, sir. What, what, is, what is that currently? Uh, currently it's parking lot. Yeah, so we'd like to rip it up and let me see it. Uh, I believe it's noted here. Sorry, it's a little small for me to see. I know it's 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 greater than the area of the eight thousand square foot. I believe is eighty nine hundred square feet, and it's contiguous with that other lawn area there, right? Yes, sir. You're just expanding. Uh, we are. Maybe I, I should have clarified also that. Uh, oops, mouse can move here. A uh, two new islands are being proposed here. I should have pointed out uh, this island. It was new on our new revised set, and it's going to be a grass grass with a tree in the middle, as well as this island here. Uh, we have with the revised set, there were some trees kind of relocated and made more aesthetically pleasing, and to break up the parking as well. That's that's about it for that. Did you um, these plans look? New since the other day, this has been uploaded to yes, to the portal. Yeah, I would say maybe around one o'clock. Okay, that comes from PPW, probably relating to the old transit about the gravel. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm oh, sorry, I should have just told you Th those comments from DPW have been addressed. Uh, I think a response letter has also been uploaded to that portal. Okay, so you saw DPW comments in the portal, yes, okay, yeah. What are your no? Oh, what are your total parking spots? The narrative lists 164, but right uh, with that new island proposed in that top left hand side, it's taking away two spots, so it's 162. I believe the requirement was somewhere around 96, 94. Yeah, why are you going with so many? Oh, that that's just what was existing on the site, and where where the truck movements are being proposed to to be able to back into that site, we'll be reducing that. Yeah, we're we're not adding. Yeah, yeah. We're, we won't be adding to any park. Yeah, okay. It's overparked as it is. Yeah, okay. Pretty good at eating out right? <laughs> <laughs> During business hours. Oh, that be best one. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't really ask them where the construction is happening to create some more green space where the demolition is happening instead of where the demolition is happening. Is it gonna? remove any of the parking temporarily and then parking be replaced uh during the construction process during the demolition of the gas and water line right uh a few parking spaces along this southwestern side of the building there's currently uh parallel parking right there uh those will obviously because that pavement will be ripped up those will be taken out but we'll only be talking about i think it was like five spaces Got another buffer of about 60 more spaces to work. Right. Yeah, there's, 
Um, tell me about the the use of the new new uh, warehouse. Is it uh, retail too? Is it like Hamden Zimmerman? Are people uh, contractors coming in and going out? Uh, I'm not. I can't specify exactly with them. They are. They're going to continue with what they are doing with Green Mountain Electric. Uh, they're not going to be doing anything different. So the plumbing support is still assuming that they're changing all that. Yeah, so to another plumbing supply company. This is Electric this Supply. Is a, yeah, I'm saying it's the same company that owns. owns so the only thing that happens there is is plumbing and cool and whatever. Cool so is Green Mountain Electric Supply uh, uh, like Hamden Zimmerman, or is it a uh, is it part of the, uh, the the grid? Is it one of those alternative grid supply companies? What are what's being warehoused there? Um, I don't know for sure. And and well, just to clarify, so there so it's a we look at it as the same type of use that was previously there. Um, I don't know exactly the material. Materials, but, but then, and the reason why this is kicking into the planning board is because it's an 8,000 square foot expansion of right. the building, which is in excess of the 2,000 that's allowed by right. I'm just, if, if this new addition is like for contractors too, like the plumbing supplier, like Hamden Zimmerman, then we would want to see some kind of pedestrian access, some kind of crosswalk, some kind of safety features, you know. Um, so all I see is that it's a, uh, loading docks and i just wanted to double check to make sure it wasn't with the name would make me think that are, it, are there any elevations or anything of this addition for us to look at maybe yeah, that'll just that us in on no, it's not it, happening. two overhead doors to it as well we're not talking like a retail building let me try to okay pull up that all up. right Answer to the question in the application packet about, about what the use you know, was. The use wasn't going to be changing from anything substantially different. Yes. But it wasn't anything before. It's a new. Right. It, it's a new business. No, I'm saying the, the company. They can call it Joe Bob. It, it's the only thing that goes on there right now, and I've been in the entire building. Is a plumbing supply store. A food deck. That's it. A bunch of red bull trucks. <laughs> but that's that's all they that's that's all that's there i guess these are some elevations of what the uh what it's going to look all like right. maintain with uh with aesthetic of the existing building right here in the center will be where that depressed loading dock is there's some of the other angle So I'm not an architect, but architecturally, this isn't screaming front door, come right. park here. Right. This looks like a back of house, two two truck docks and two at grade overhead yep. doors yep. and associated man doors. Yep. So I think it's looks like a back of house operation to me. You know, um, I can see that that restored area that you're you're reverting into lawn that looks like it's within a buffer zone are you working with the conservation commission yes we have that? a meeting with them i believe next week okay next week or if not two weeks enough now and is that in the same general catchment as the addition so you're you're restoring or you're matching your impervious areas in the same drainage yes catchment so that, that that's all part of that same sub catchment so that Okay. And that's going to be treated. I can actually show you on the other plans how that's going to be treated. I can extensively talk to you about stormwater. No, that's okay. You can talk to the Conservation Commission about it. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that, that you are. Yeah, oh, of course. Okay. So I, I see there's a concrete walkway called out to the... Uh... To the west at the bottom of the addition that doesn't seem to attach to anything or is that i'm sorry uh right we're over right down here i thought 
concrete between his concrete walkway, trying to figure out where or why. It does show 15 feet from the edge of the building to, I think that's just where you're still you know, driving around. Yeah, it's a, it I does just, say walkway. I'm yeah. just wondering why they would put a walkway there. Um, sort of at the bottom of your screen there, right below your shaded new area that says by two minutes walkway. Oh, that's what it, that's an existing concrete. That's not a proposed. So that we will we will we will be getting rid of the. Uh, that will be a. This will be a curb along right here, okay. protecting the building. Okay. All right. The the plans I have are another question. Thanks for that one. The plans I have show the islands in a different location, and and so, could you go back to where these green islands are? Yep. Just, absolutely. I'm just wondering, it's such a sea of pavement there. I'm trying to see if there's any way during this right. period of construction, if we can get some more green space in there, some. Which, yeah, we saw that comment and we're like, hey, you know what, we should be breaking up this parking. So originally, well, this, there, yep. this island was not proposed. This was just normal parking that was just existing. Uh, and this was striped, but we, we were transforming it into this will be a landscaped island with a tree as well as as well as this will now be, we'll break up the parking, landscape island, throw a tree, and, and we're also throwing a tree. And what's that little cross-hatched area there um, to the left of the bottom landscaped island? This one? Uh, yeah. This this is striped area. This is to helpfully maintain the truck movement in order to come up and back into it. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Uh, while you're talking about the landscape islands, um, can you describe how, is there a detail for that island, how wide it is, and what, um, whether, it, I mean, it should be wide enough to be able to um, accommodate a tree, so five to seven feet, is that? Right, they are existing with the, uh, I believe currently it's eight and a half foot to nine foot parking spaces. Got it. And we're taking up the full width of that. Okay. And just so so I um, noted the um, comment that to meet the parking requirements, the shading for parking, I think they needed seven trees in the parking lot to break up at, at a ratio of one per 15 parking spaces. So you're putting in- One to 25. Uh, I'm sorry, one to 25, yep. <laughs> so- Yes, we are putting in- Seven, there'll be okay. one here, 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 three, and then we have four. We wanna, wanna break up this newer area line it some trees and i have the, the list of the typing of trees right up top here keeping off the native species and i know one of the comments was to change our uh, original proposed species of trees and because we're talking parking these aren't new parking spaces so it doesn't trigger our ev installation right right Okay, so those are not the species. Well, it's not a native species. You don't, you guys would prefer separate species, different species for this? So the, some of these were actually recommended by the tree warden um, as not necessarily native, but non-invasive. And they are good for wet areas. So I think these are proposed towards the wetland and the wetland buffer. Yeah. I mean, not that you have to go to. We have a whole list, and the applicant can basically select from the list. Sure, and we're absolutely. If you guys want to see different trees, we're absolutely willing. Um, and the lighting situation, the fact that uh, there's no lighting shown, do we do we just assume that they're going to comply with the lighting? Um, standards. um, you can certainly have a condition that shows prior to an issuance of certificate of occupancy that they, um, show a certified, um, a plan certified by, a uh, lighting engineer that it meets the zoning with no waivers. But isn't it an so, industry environment? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but we do, we did end up submitting a lighting plan. Okay. Uh, I believe yesterday for Green Mountain Electric Supply submitted the lighting plan for it. Okay. And I'm just trying to pull it up now. 
So this is for exterior site lighting. So they'd still need to meet the color temperature and the maximum light allowances in the general industrial district for outside lighting. This is the proposed lighting plan. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, sure. It's, it's in the portal as well. You know, there are two huge poles in this parking lot that are larger than any other poles in the industrial park. Um, one of them is always on, one is always off. Um, I don't know if, if, if retroactive, they apply to the criteria in the lighting plan. Um, they're multi-heads and I, I don't know. And I can't tell if they're, I just saw that plan real quickly. I don't know if they're sewn on this plan. Um, but are we concerned only with the lighting that comes with the, the new addition? The proposed addition, yeah. Yeah. We can't do that to Yeah, so they can't change the heads on those without coming into compliance, no matter what. So even if six months from now they change the, the head on those lamps, they have to comply to current standards. Um, but they're not required to, and because they're not changing that part of the site, that's why it's not triggered. All right. Uh, why don't we take a moment and open it up to the public? Is there anybody here in the city council chambers who would like to speak in favor or in opposition to the, uh, Application. We're all good here. And we still have no one nope. joining us on Zoom tonight. Nope. Gosh, we have lots of it's good. All right. Um any uh, further questions from board members? Uh, well, let's wait so we can still ask the applicant a few things if if it comes up. I didn't see the DPW comments. I saw the response to the DPW comments just now when I looked in there. I assume there was nothing. So we're still major. So we're still adjusting to this new portal. And just today, the Department of Public Works decided they're going to put their review comments actually right in the um, portal at, in the details section. So sort of right at the top, it says Department of Public Works review. I'll read them because I've copied them now into the minutes. Some of them have been addressed <laughs> um, this afternoon, but um, we care about where they're going. So on the front page of the oh, the details yeah, tab. The details oh, okay. okay. Um, if you go back, so if you go to the details tab and you scroll just half a page. Maybe three quarters of the page down on the right says the Public Works Department review. Do you see that? I can sh share my screen if you want. So right. click on the details. Off. Yeah, I'm on the details. Okay, and then on the right hand side, the top of the details, it says details and it says planning and zoning review on the right. I don't see that. Oh. No. To planning board view. Yeah. No, that's a real really good certain view. Yeah. That just I just no, I don't know. I don't true. I'm on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> I just lost it. Okay. We'll need so staff and there we go. There we go. It does come on the final printout. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, I have the thing back up, okay. but I don't know so where. I'll read it to you, and I'll have to look at to see what the outside looks like. Okay, so it's for stormwater comments. The, I'm just going to read it in English. Some of these have been corrected just so you know. The, gravel, the area of gravel identified in the plan on the southwestern side of the property appears to be pavement in poor condition, not a gravel base. On a site visited by DPW, a strip of pavement 20. 340 square feet adjacent to this area is proposed to be removed or replaced with gravel, which will result in an area of gravel surrounded by pavement. 
Um, it appears to be used for truck parking and snow storage, and a change in gravel may result in less stable service and greater discharge of sediment and gravel into nearby catch basins. Existing surface conditions should be confirmed. And then, so that part is what I think led to the change of saying, okay, we're not going to rip up this and make more gravel. We'll put, we'll just make a grass strip area adjacent to the existing grass. And then the second comment is stormwater operation and maintenance plan should be implemented for the stormwater system by the property owner to ensure that the system continues to function in good working condition. The stormwater operation and maintenance plan must be approved by the DPW and recorded as part of the planning board decision. Um, then, uh, is that typical, Carolyn? So, because why wouldn't Conservation time, Commission be doing that? What? Why wouldn't the Conservation Commission require an operation maintenance plan? They may also, but because this is a major project, but it doesn't trigger its own separate stormwater permit because it doesn't rise, it's not that big of a project. As a major project, the planning board. Uh, I'm sorry, the DPW often recommends to the planning board that the condition may be written to um, create an operation and maintenance plan that gets then recorded next to the decision. Um, and so it's clear as it passes on, you know, to the subsequent owners. So there could be two operation maintenance plans recorded? No. Be, so um, it'll be the same one. You're right. The Conservation Commission usually just evaluates the stormwater maintenance plan um and if there's already one i mean we coordinate so that there's not two being separately reported okay okay which is convenient if we're all in the same department <laughs> very much um and then other utility comments prior to construction the dpw would like to get hybrid material specification and excavation trench permit is required for any excavation within city right away. So these then are just comments, not to be for planning for conditions, but um, somehow it went to the applicant, but it's not viewed on the public side of it. So I think it's, um, so anyway, that part worked because you could have to make sure that, you know, the applicants are on. And that's it. So if I might then, the, the area that DPW spec that really isn't gravel, but degraded macadam, I guess, that's not being altered at this point. Right. So will the CONSCOM look at that? Because they are using that for truck parking and storage. Well, I it, think the I, key piece is making sure you have a maintenance plan so that you're treating and collecting the sediments before they go into the catch basin. So that's part of, that's the bigger issue is even if it's degraded, you still have to maintain your right. stormwater. And they'll look at anything that's in the 50 foot buffer. Right. Um, okay. Other questions for the applicant? <laughs> um, so we have a lighting plan. There's no traffic um, study associated with this. Um, there's no other. There's a waiver for the traffic waiver request. Ah, is there? Okay. Resting us. Uh, so we're accepting that. that waiver during our motion. Mm -hmm. um, prior to CO, there has to be a certification that the lighting installs comply with the zoning and the plans. So we weren't asking for any like ITE calculations for an extra 8,000 square feet of this use as far as truck, as trips go. Yeah. So they're asking for a waiver from the traffic study, given that this is already quite a large industrial use and we don't require mitigation in the industrial oh, district and it's, um, you know, it's sort of confined within the industrial park, then no. Yeah. That was part of my, it was, yeah, you know, they'd have a lot more truck traffic. And, you know. uh, we still have, uh, sorry, I just cut somebody off. Um, seven bike parking spaces, uh, I believe. Okay, seems unusual, there. but it's, uh, yep, maybe the people who go to degrees of comfort could use the bike parking also. Um, so is there, a, does the plan spec out a location for the bicycle? Yes, 
we were having uh the pros bike enclosure will be up here where the I guess if someone were to ride in on a bike is where the bike enclosure is proposed. Okay. Up by the plumbing the supply. Employees too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been there on my bike to buy something and just had to lean it against just the building. Not down by the loading docks. <laughs> okay. Good. Carolyn, the the waiver we just discussed a minute ago. Um, why is that not mentioned in the staff report? I don't know. You started. Oversight. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Melissa yeah. pulled it out of the application. But yeah, it was in the application. And we should yeah. know about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. I think uh, we pretty much have our answers. Um, I, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing now. Second. Who Did made you move? Motion? Did anyone make a motion? I will make the motion. I'll second. Thank you, Stacy. All right, motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor, close in the public comment. Unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> to entertain a motion. Who's feeling bold? I'll do it. Uh, I move that we approve the site plan to add 8,000 square feet to the existing warehouse by Green Mechanical Electric Supply at 168, 178 Industrial Drive. Um, I think with the waiver for the traffic study accepted and uh, the condition that uh, prior to CEO certification that the lighting installed complies with the zoning and plans. Uh, is there the other condition there, Carolyn? That uh, the water maintenance plan recorded with the condition. Right, maintenance plan recorded with the condition. Uh, Pre-construction plans incorporating conditions that include parking lot layout. Oh, they've already done that. Okay. Yep. So just those two conditions and the accepted waiver. Good. Thank you. For a second. Second. Thanks, Rich. Motions been made by. Melissa, seconded by Rich Baker. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, guys. This is your first time in front of the Northampton Planning Board? Yes, sir. You're batting a thousand. <laughs> Good man. You got out in one hearing. That's very rare. <laughs> Heard things are run pretty smooth up in Northampton, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Is this your flash drive? Oh, you know, I, I called it. I was going to forget it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Still nobody out there knocking on the Zoom door, huh? <laughs> you have a big do not enter sign on it. Are they trying to I don't think they have manual buttons there. I, I do want to submit for public record that my online order at Buena Usano got kicked out today, got canceled. So there might just be some technological problems in the city. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I wonder where you were going with that. Yeah. All right. Um, I wonder if, they, if this is the new thing to have people in council chambers be able to hear. <laughs> oh, God. It is, oh, it's like not working. Yeah. 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 Someday, someday, someday. <laughs> Okay. Just Maybe it's, yeah. it's not Maybe your mic, it's just your computer. computer. You know, I'm having audio issues with this, but I had it turned on. I all right. To me, none of my files will open now. You know, your order got rejected. Now, uh, all of my PDFs won't open here. Let's try this. Uh, okay. Technology. The messenger. Uh, 
Give me one, one second. Yeah. Please, uh, yeah. That's your go-to order. I okay, like spicy barbecue pulled pork. Either like. I think I'm ready. Okay, at this time, we at 7 30 p.m., we'd like to open up site plan for a second attached dwelling by Tim O'Reilly at 53 Union Street, map ID 32A 067. And uh, I believe the applicant's here for a budget, please. Yes. I'm Tim O'Reilly. I'm here tonight um, on behalf of the homeowners at 53 Union Street. Um, their mother is is moving, and she's planning to move in the side yard, be close to her daughter and her grandchildren. So I'll walk you through tonight um, what we're proposing to do, how we meet all the applicable zoning requirements. Um, I just went in there. Um, he was the fall guy. I got the DPW comments. Uh, pulled up as well. We can look at those. Um, why don't we start with the site plan? Um, we're in the URC district, so we're meeting all the applicable requirements under um, 350 um, 6.11, the form-based criteria for the two and single-family homes. Um, the one thing in here um, that we don't meet and that we're requesting planning board um, approval for is our porch dimensions. So I'll flip over here. Um, we'll look at two things together. Here's our proposed front porch. Um, this porch is about nine and a half feet wide um, and only five feet deep. Um, it doesn't meet the six foot depth requirement. So the requirement is eight feet by six feet. We are nine and a half feet wide, but we are only five feet deep. Um, the reason for this, uh, why we're sort of inset here, um, is the layout on the lot. We're against the front property setback and then in the back let's take a look at this together um we need 10 feet of building separation between our new proposed building and what's there existing and um, if that porch were to stick out that extra foot in front you know we're here this porch is that shaded area if we were to push the building back another foot to make sure within the front setback uh, we'd be getting even closer to this deck and right now we're just a hair we're in compliance with that 10 foot setback. So um, we are wider than the, the requirement, but we're only five feet deep and not six feet. Um, but no, it doesn't count in terms of, it'll count in terms of our you know open space calculation. Um, it doesn't count in terms of the square feet of our proposed second unit. But you're asking for that 10 foot setback. The 10 foot setback, it isn't from the corner of the house proper, it's from the corner of the deck. Um, I believe I'll check with our civil team, but we talked with the town on what they wanted to see with the building department, um, and they wanted to see 10 feet between um, our proposed unit and that deck. So we're actually, there's a little corner there. We're going to clip just a hair off of that deck uh, to make sure we're, we're 10 feet away. Um, you know, frame that entry to the backyard a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's you know sort of procedurally the only thing in there. Um, otherwise, um, through our application process, um, uh, zoning or open space came up. So our open space table is down here, um, which we added in there based on the lot size um, using the open space definition in the bylaw and what we're proposing here in terms of um, dwelling space and porches, as well as the added parking space. So what's there right now is sort of the shotgun style driveway, um, the stack spaces, and we now have a space off to the side. So we're in compliance with all the parking requirements. Can you drop down again to that chart? Space? Yep. So we have our existing lot coverage, our proposed lot coverage. Um, over here on the side is our lot size. And so those calculations down there, oops, let me scroll over. Um, are based on our total lot size, what's existing and what's proposed. Um, and that includes everything we're building and the parking. And you need to have 30%, right? Open space? Yes. 
thirty percent minimum. Yeah, minimum, and it was at thirty-one. I can't remember what what's what did it end up at? Six sixty. Huh? Huh? Sixty. That's what it says. Most open there. space percent for sixty. Sixty. Right. Um. So. A little bit of an obstacle illusion. Yeah. Doesn't look yeah. Like it to your eye. No, no, it doesn't. I thought that maybe there was a mistake and they had flipped those numbers and it was really 40% that was open. Yeah, it's maybe that it, I just did. I had the same exact thing. I was like, let me double check this. And I did the math. We we're 40% if we're dividing our proposed by our lot size, we get 40% of lot coverage of all of our um decks building area parking spaces uh we're at that 40 percent lot coverage 40 percent is covered 60 mm -hmm. percent is open oh yeah yep the side and front setbacks give you a lot of area that kind of gets, yeah, it's hard to um, conceptualize. I pulled up the property card. Uh, I'd be happy to walk through the math if you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was one thing that came up. The other thing were the trees on the neighbor's property. Um, so these trees here along the side yard are on the neighbor's property. Um, we've contacted an arborist. He went out and did a site visit. Um, I was just away on vacation, so I just got back today and um, just got you the email um, from the arborist over at Bartlett Tree Service. Um, so just to go through this, he said, you know, we can absolutely prune. Um, he said, I think the fence suffices as physical protection for the trunks of the trees, but given the proximity to the trunks where excavation will occur, I'd recommend root pruning prior to digging to avoid unnecessary injury to the root systems beyond the edge of the excavation. Also, given the fact that trees will likely endure some root loss fertilization to help give the trees food and allow them better chance at coping with losses and aid in recovery as well would be recommended. So I, I haven't, up, I've uploaded this to the portal today. Um, I don't have a formal proposal for you. Um, we are gonna follow all their recommendations. So the tree trimming, the existing tree protection as the fence, uh, root pruning before any digging starts, fertilization in the fall um, for those affected roots. So are you working with the abutting uh, property owner for the fertilization? Because generally you want to fertilize on the other side of the tree to encourage root growth away from where you're digging. So you don't want to fertilize on your property. I, I don't know the direct answer to that. Okay. I'll go exactly what their recommendation is. If that involves any work on the neighbor's property, we'll absolutely be sure to inform them and let them know and I'm, explain the rationale. I'm really surprised that there's two maples right at the sidewalk there that are expected out there. And one of them is really, really sick down at the trunk of the tree. I'm, I'm surprised that Mr. Bartlett didn't call that out. I, I don't think it's gonna survive even without construction. So I'm just recommending you or Mr. Bartlett look at those trees again so you don't get caught down the road when that one dies. Uh, yeah, and I, I am by no means the tree expert. Yep. So um, when I get this proposal back, I'd be happy to share that with you um, if you want to see more details. Um, just to get one of us the tree experts down the line there at that 16-inch beach. Oh. oh, okay. Got to find something on these sites. <laughs> So uh, porch, um, trees, open space. Um, the last one here is just DPW comments. Um, so I just, on my end, on, on the inside, I just grabbed these. They just went in here today and did these um, this morning. So I just want to look at that, with, look at these with you, and we'll talk about them. Um, so we're going to do all applicable permits with the DPW water and sewer availability entry. Um, fill everything out and pay pay the fees. Um, they had our existing water and sewer is sir, excuse me existing water and sewer not shown on the plan. Um, let's see where's our plan here. We've showed our proposed here, so our water and sewer 
coming across the front to the front of the existing house. Um, that is where those utilities connect to the street from the main house. Water and sewer are in the existing house going into the street. Our plan is to connect there for both of those. And um, the DPW has provided some guidance in number three on how they want to see that. So they want to see a meter pit um, for the water meter and then two shutoffs, one to the ADU and one to the house. Um, I have seen this in other municipalities, so we'll make sure we we comply with exactly what they want to see. Um, and then they have a note just in here that uh, we and the property owner are responsible for the line that services the building from our new building to that connection. And, you know, we'll we'll meet plumbing code with all the required cleanouts um, in the structure, outside of the structure, and um, as needed. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, that's it. Can we talk about the parking one more time? Sure. Are, are we expanding the, uh, the curb cut? Uh, no. So, um, we're required to have an additional space based on our proposed new square footage. Um, what's there right now? Um, let's see, do I have a draw tool? Here we go. So what's here right now? Um, how do we have yep. this shaded? I believe is here in blue. So their existing driveway is here. Our proposed expansion to make sure that we're fitting the required size spaces is switch over to red an expansion um, here in order to to have that you know eight and a half feet by eighteen, and then as well um, they have this existing area along the side of their porch here um, that is already currently um, sorry. so they 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 come in off the street and then fan up to that space right we're not expanding because correct yep what are curb cuts for to be 13 feet uh, maximum 15. 15 and this one's about 20 22 so i imagine that's grandfathered in right over uh -huh. here, two two parking spaces wide uh, would be 19 feet. Um, so that's what we're showing here, at least. Did you say staying the same? Or... So here, I don't have measurements on this plan. If you'd like specific measurements, I can absolutely go get those for you here. Um, this is where we're showing this curb cut. Here in red, can you guys see that? Yep. yep. Um, so You're not touching that curb. Correct. Nope. It looks like it's pretty much wide enough to accommodate two cars. Yeah. Yeah. Two cars. So I'd say it's going to call it. Yep. If, if the homeowners could have it their way, they wouldn't do a third space. It's for sure. the elderly mom. Sure. Uh, we're not even going to park her. It's like, we got we to show that we need it. So, but, correct. Exactly. Uh, that would be prepared for the and, So It's not grandfather. They're asking for a change and they're widening. You know they're they're making a change to parking, and so you can have the it may be an existing condition, but if they're um, the board can approve wider, um, they could also the board could also require narrowing at the opening, and then wide it can widen out on the their own property. It's really just where it crosses the sidewalk, right. um, and so um, it, you said it's eighteen instead of fifteen feet. Uh, this is, I, I was speaking to two parking spaces wide here is eight and a half plus eight and a half, so at 19, that's not the curb cut. Yeah. That would be on curb the curb cut. Off. They're not doing any work from the sidewalk to the street. So they're not touching anything. Okay. So, so basically, I think you should just acknowledge the existing condition and allow it to continue to be accommodated because they're not changing the curb. They're not asking for any trench permitting in the street but the reason we keep it at 15 feet yeah. is so that pedestrians don't have to navigate that large area right on sidewalks okay and speaking of sidewalks the, the sidewalk in front of the proposed building um is rather dicey and all busted up but i don't think that's within our purview to ask the developer to replace sidewalk it's uh so um, it depends, um, you know, 
there could be quite a bit of construction damage coming in and out and across the sidewalk. That could be, um, you know, the DPW could ask them to replace it if there's additional damage to the sidewalk. It's not a concrete sidewalk, it's just blacktop. Um, and typically for a major project, the board does require replacements. But this is a, you know, yep. be small. Okay. We'll let you open it up to the public. Is there anyone here in council chambers who would like to speak for or against this application? And still nobody else out there and not even Mr. Hensel tonight. Okay, very good. Other questions from board members? All right. Is there, is there a reason, I mean, this, the, the five versus the six with that? Do you have an opinion about that? So there are sort of there are standard um, design guidelines that were established and adopted by city council to um, ensure that um, new units in all of the neighborhoods had sort of that um, public private interface and porch depth. So it's a standard um, porch depth requirement, but they're specifically allowances for the board to approve waivers given certain situations like I think this is a good example of a situation that might warrant it and they're making it wider but it's it's just sort of um I mean the other thing about this existing house is it doesn't have a front porch it has a side porch it's you know the mm -hmm. side of the house is facing Union Street so um and frankly that's you, you know this neighborhood and many neighborhoods don't have exactly the same, you know, orientation for every house. So I think it's a reasonable request for that. But the the reason for the dimensions just to have a basic sort of set of standards for to follow, and then for, and and the area is essentially the same. It's forty eight square feet versus forty seven point five square feet. So I think they're meeting the intent based on the constraints. I think the only place where something might come into play is if there was a, a, a handicap accessible ramp built. Maybe there'd be six feet would give a more turning radius to get in the front door, but um, I don't think that's why we chose six right. feet for that. But all right. So, so just to be clear, the the porch requirement. I mean, we're speculating that all the more basic, but but is to just create a front facing require a front facing porch and open construction. Right, and create a minimum standard for that. So that you know, if you just had it without a dimension, I'm sure you would see all sorts of different things just to meet the letter but of is the law. porch required at all? Mm -hmm. yeah. A covered front entrance. Good. Any special lighting we should be aware of? Uh, nope, this is a residential project. Um, let's go over to the layout. Uh, everything we're doing is dark sky compliant fixtures. Um, so there'll be um, a fixture here in the front, a fixture on the side and a fixture on the back. Um, they'll all meet those requirements. The, the units on either side of this, I think are rental units, which traditionally Folks don't come and are concerned too much about projects when you're a renter. So I guess um, the 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 property owners were notified though be via the postcards, right? So yeah. I have a question about the arborist. It's not a report. So we're probably going to make a condition that the follow the recommendations of this of the arborist. It's it's an email. That just says we sh we could probably do these few things. Is that okay? I think yes. I I would recommend it. I think that was the biggest issue is that Arbor should look at the trees, figure out if there's going to be a negative impact from construction, and propose mitigation. Okay, well, so we can't propose. I mean, we can say we think you should do this, but it's happening on someone else's property. I mean, we can't force them to, to go on someone else's property. 
No, the, the work is being, the mitigation would be on where the cuttings happen. So it would be on this applicant's property. Well, you, but the Chris end. was talking about the um, oh. fertilization. Fertilization right. would need to happen. Right. Right. But right. the root you pruning. To force the right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you'd want to make sure, I mean, the neighbor would need to be in agreement. That, yeah. You know, so. yeah. And no, the board can't require that, but the other, every, anything on this side of the property to protect the tree. Yeah, no, I get it. I just want to make sure that we say that we don't impose something that's yeah. not right. right. Well, I mean, the board could require an agreement from the abutter that they will allow fertilization on their property. Um, I think maybe the other, the I, I would recommend if you're gonna sort of go down that path more that agreement from the abutter, that the abutter understands the recommendation from the arborist and doesn't have a problem with the fact that the tree roots are gonna be cut on the neighbor's property, and then not necessarily saying that the neighbor assents to fertilization, but assents to the work being done with respect to the trees. You see what I'm saying? So before issuance of a building permit, you could require that the applicant submit a statement from the abutter saying they understand the work being done and they don't have any issues with it. Yeah, I don't know. Because what if they did have issues with it? Like, we don't typically say you can't do work on your property because I have a tree and you might be affecting my root system. Yeah. That's yeah, not like it's not the whole project. Yeah, I think we can just say these are the recommendations. I mean, if I if I own a property, of course I want someone. Right. Me too. You're fertilized. Just saying we can't. We have to make sure that the email isn't. I have. I I just went through. Pardon me being on the phone. I have the proposal. I literally just got back this morning from vacation, so this all happened while I was away. I had a screenshot of the email. I have the proposal here as well. Um, be be happy to submit that. Yeah, um, I mean, good. I think you're right. So I think it's just that um, the my initial concern was, what if the arbor said, "No, this there's no way you can do this work without killing the trees." Yeah. And I think the planning board could make a determination based on the information. The arbor is not saying that, but is not saying you should do this root pruning, you should do these other things. And so I think to the extent that the board conditions that the recommendations on this property are done. Um, and if that, if the abutter doesn't want fertilization on that side, there's nothing we have to do. Okay. Um, and it looks like it will be both the fertilization and some of that pruning. So uh, I think the other, you know, unspoken piece is the, we'll certainly be neighborly and give them a heads up and let them know and walk them through the proposal and Show them the due diligence we've done or mm -hmm. trees. Okay. Good. And I think there's um are we gonna waive the traffic mitigation requirement? That's a request as well. I would be in favor of that I for a small that as well. Is it a one bedroom unit, two bedroom? Uh yeah, it's sort of like one bedroom and an office kind of thing. Yeah. I think everyone needs a Zoom room these days. <laughs> I, th I think we can require that they prove that they try to contact the, the neighbors, the, uh, which, which could, but it did. So, you know, not just from the neighbors. So, I think we can ask the inspector so that they have a coach to make Regarding the tree so, treatment. Okay. But I'm satisfied with not pushing the applicant to do a full traffic study or give mitigation on this. <clears throat> There's a parking on the street, right? Um, for guests, if this uh, there's enough parking here for both units. School. There's, school. At the school at Historic Northampton. So technically, uh, uh, any 
construction required the trap on the field? Um, no. So um the there's traffic mitigation assumed with a new residential unit. However, there is a waiver that um two screens is was in place previously about if you could build something with outside plan approach. Um and the board has the meaning it's a small enough scale that um you don't you could do the project except for some other thing that's kicking your site plan, the board can waive that. This is a small unit where previously an accessory dwelling was by right, it didn't require site plan review. So that's why I'm recommending that you, and we haven't changed the zoning to catch up to it. Okay. So, yeah. All right, great. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll move to close public hearing. I second. Thank you, Melissa. Seconded by Chris Tate. Uh, all those in favor of closing the public hearing? Okay. I think we put the applicant through the rigor here for this small project. Um, Melissa, you've been so good about <laughs> figuring out if we have any codicils to put on our motion <laughs> well see if i we'll see if i did it right um we'll see so i'll move that we approve the site plan for a second detached dwelling by tim o'reilly at 53 union street um with the condition that the applicants follow the recommendation of the arborist is there anything else yep. I was going to say? And then also that we are granting the waiver of the traffic mitigation requirement. I think we have to note the existing condition of the curb cut and that we're okay. We accept we are accepting the existing condition of the curb cut. Curb cut width. Width. Um, and if there's damage by construction, that, that's a DPW will address that right and then I, I think we also approve the um reduced depth of the front porch good what a team is there anything else did we miss anything no, i think that's you want us to add anything else <laughs> <laughs> all right the most has been made by melissa is there a second Seconded by Sam. Okay, very good. Any more discussion? All those in favor? All right, all in favor. Thank you very much. Good luck. I'm glad you snuck a vacation in there. Oh, yeah. Busy man. I had to come back a day early. <laughs> is the, is the, uh, okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. So um, Tim was asking, because he's also helping with this other application for the a, um, ADU, the applicant notified us this morning that they tested positive for COVID, so not here. And instead of having Tim Riley um, present, he wanted to request a continuation. So we've got um, three permits already for September 12th. So I would recommend September 26th. Um, I let the applicant know that that would probably be the date. So, um, and they're fine with that. They're not planning construction till next spring. So um, he had no qualms with that continuation. Good. So we need to make a motion to let first we open up the... <clears throat> yep. So uh, we're opening up a site plan for a second detached dwelling by Willem Stitzma at 105 Straw Avenue, Florence Map ID 17D021. And we've just heard from staff that uh, the applicant is asking for a continuation. Um, so, and the board has talked about moving that to the next hearing on September- 26. 26 at 7 p.m. I move that we, is this, is it open? Yeah, I think we're open. Yeah. 
Move to continue. Yeah. Is there any public comment? Well, you wouldn't want to take okay. it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I move that we continue this hearing for September 26th at 7 p.m. Great. Is there a second? All right. Motion made by Chris, seconded by Stacy. Um, any discussion? Glad he didn't come in here with his COVID germs. All those in favor? Unanimous. We'll see you on se in September. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we have a set of minutes to approve. Are there any eight? Minutes. Last minute Last minutes. Minute. Oh, I read those minutes. <laughs> I I would like to move to approve the minutes from that hearing of the date that July they are. July 25th. <laughs> Great, another motion made by Chris. Is there a second? Second. Second by Rich Baker to approve the minutes of July 25th. All those in favor? Okay, great. I read them and I was so happy not to be at that hearing. <laughs> um, anything else, Carolyn? No ANRs. Wow, okay. Move to close the meeting. A motion to adjourn is made at 8.13 by Sam. Is there a second? Thank you, Stacy. All right, all those in favor?